happiness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. God. Hallelujah. And Pastor, we salute what God is doing in your life. And I saw when I came in, I saw so many people outside. Those outside, can you shout a loud hallelujah? I mean, it was a, so many people. I'm not even sure you can hear them from here. Very expectant. And I want you to know that whether you are inside or outside, as far as this meeting is concerned, you will be maximally imparted. In the name of Jesus. Can we lift our hands and ask the Lord to give us very definite encounters this morning? Lift your voice. Speak to him. Thank you, Jesus. Someone is praying, ask the Lord to impart wisdom by his word, to impart understanding. That as the word comes, let it come with your healing, let it come with your deliverance, let it come with the grace that lifts you. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Thank you, Father, again for this privilege. We have come to fellowship with one another and to receive wisdom from you. We pray that you will speak to us even by your word. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that we go from glory to glory, from strength to strength. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. While, while um, Pastor was just giving the charge before I came up, you know, it just, it just occurred to me again in my spirit and I thought to just say that before we really get to the word. Wherever I stop, just receive it and then we'll pray and that does it for today in this kingdom we rise only according as the help of God makes our rising available let me explain to you what I mean the Bible says a man can receive nothing unless it is given unto him by God are we together it says by you I can run to a troop by my God I can leap over a wall our sufficiency in this kingdom sufficiency defines your capacity to meet standards it says our sufficiency is not of ourselves is that true it says our sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers it is God that gives men the ability help from God is the heritage of all believers if you know how to access it and very quickly let me tell you there are three ways according to scripture that God helps men number one is the mercy of God the first way the help of God is translated in the life of the believer is through the administration of his mercy the mercy of God is beyond a sinner 
asking for pardon mercy has many dimensions hallelujah the bible says it is of the lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not i will have mercy upon whom i will have mercy i will have compassion upon whom i will have compassion on. the mercy of god is mysteriously powerful number two the second way god helps men is through the ministry of men when god wants to help you he will introduce men to your life in john chapter 5 the bible talks about a man who was at a pool called bethesda for 38 years and then the bible says when jesus walked up to the man and said why are you in this condition his only answer is i have no man not i have no ability i have my ability to move is only that i am too slow relative to those who have men to help them while i am trying to access the pool someone would go before me i have no man that's what he told jesus so he recognized that men can accelerate our results it was not that the man was lazy it was not that the man did not have the ability is only that he was not fast enough relative to the demand for healing because the bible says whoever stepped in first so it was an issue of speed he had ability but there was no man to bring him help and acceleration are we learning now the third way according to scripture that god helps men is through the ministry of the holy spirit the holy spirit is called helper helper does not take responsibility over your life helper gives you the assistance if i ask you to help me it doesn't necessarily mean i will back up it just means that you are going to provide an advantage for me listen carefully so when we say men are helped by god we mean that one or more or all these tripartite forces have been released towards a man's destiny the mercy of god the ministry of men the ministry of the holy spirit and all these three are accessible to the saints so that when you see men rising it's not as if god isolated a few people and just decided to lavishly bless them against others it is that they have access light that by the ability of a man without help you cannot go far Bazanji kunyaba. Now you know what you are saying. The one who shows me mercy, the one who can send the right man to my life, the one who can give me access to his spirit. He says there is a spirit in man. Job chapter 32 and verse 8. This was Elihu's testimony. He says, and the breath, the inspiration of the Almighty. He says, he giveth men, not some men, giveth men understanding. Hallelujah. So when you see what God is doing in the life of your pastor, when you see what God is doing in the life of everyone you admire, I am saying it again, that unassisted by these spiritual forces, we are not much. You see, you take away these forces of advantage in our lives and we do not weigh much. The factor that makes any life you see exceptional is the synergy of all of these spiritual forces in the life of an individual. How do you fail when the mercy of God is there for you? How do you fail when God has positioned strategic men in your life? How do you fail when the Holy Spirit himself, the spirit of truth? Hallelujah. I just thought to say that to encourage someone, it's not your background. No. That is, that is a consoling answer, but a very wrong one. It is not what you have done or what you have not done. No. It is that there is something intrinsically deficient with your understanding. You have not yet understood that men are only great according to the degree to which the realm of the spirit supports and assists them. So right where you are, you can make up your mind 
that I can access the grace of God, I open up myself to receive the mercy of God. The prodigal son said, the Bible says he came to himself and he said, how many hired servants as my father and I am here feeding with the swine. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. And he got up and took that step. And the Bible says he met the father somewhere midway his journey and he was restored. That is the mercy of God. Are we together? There is no reason to live a defeated life. This is not some church talk. This is the reality of scripture. Truly there is no reason. You see, the mercy of God is there to help you if you know how to access mercy because you will be learning. In fact, my this is really, I'm now going to my teaching. My I came with a burden this morning to take you beyond the realm of the consciousness of the provisions that are in Christ to show you how to access them and make them your experience here and now. It is profitable to have the consciousness. The Bible says in 1 Peter, now is it? 2 Peter 1 from verse 2 down to 4, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that true? Then the Bible says, According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. He says, Through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. He says, Whereby uh, we are given these great and exceeding precious promises, that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust here's the point he says by these great and precious promises we will validate that indeed we have been recipients of his divine nature that means if it is true that that life is at work in you there must be evidences expressions that show that today right now you are a carrier of that divine life. It must move beyond just a confession. It must move beyond a consciousness into an experience. Are we together now? Yes. Having the consciousness of it is powerful. But you will be frustrated if all you have is the consciousness of it. The life of God is supposed to be an experience. Jesus told them, repent for the kingdom of God is now at hand. Meaning it is within your reach. He says, oh, taste and see not just oh assume you can taste and see that the lord is good <laughs> hallelujah so can we discuss a few things today ask the lord for understanding one more time father i receive understanding in the name of jesus i receive understanding hallelujah praise the name of the lord so in this kingdom the bible paul in in his exegesis of scripture what we call redemption realities let me start from there paul began to teach us a few things and some of the things that paul began to teach us were the things that jesus told the disciples they did not have the capacity to bear there were many things that Paul would later teach us that Jesus did not even teach the disciples because he told them it would be a waste to teach you at this level. Are we together? He said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear it now. How be it when the spirit of truth is come that he will guide you into all truth. Now, Paul, by the spirit, has received this a download of many things among them the believers advantage listen very carefully paul began to open us up to the realities of redemption it was paul that made sense he helped us understand 
the implication of the death as we call it the burial and the resurrection and even the exalted position of jesus it didn't matter to us without his knowledge we did not even know the meaning of that to our lives it was paul who began to give us that understanding that there is a prophetic implication to jesus's dying he is coming back to life and he's been exalted in fact it was paul that made us know that we were in him and we were with him while that happened are we together so paul tells us in ephesians chapter 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 he begins to give us a sound exegesis helping us number one to understand the believer's position in christ helping us to understand that this is what happened to christ when he died when he resurrected when he was exalted and now coronated as lord of all and king of kings and then he says that while all of that was happening that we were with him and we were in him and now he teaches us to walk in the consciousness of these provisions are we together for example give us ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 please ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 let's read together one to read blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus who had blessed us now pay attention to this scripture paul is teaching us and he's saying that god and father of our lord jesus christ had blessed us with all spiritual blessings they are blessings but they are spiritual and the bible says they are in heavenly places in christ they have a location are we together now he's giving us a very intelligent information so that on account of all that happened the entire capture of the redemptive activities of the christ we have been given many many advantages including this that he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings now what are they what exactly are spiritual blessings the bible says all spiritual blessings what are they can you show me what a spiritual blessing looks like give me a picture because we learn in pictures if i say orange you have an idea of what an orange looks like if i say mango you have an idea of what a mango looks like if i say spiritual blessing do you have a pictorial representation of what it means so that you will know when you have it it says he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ this right here ladies and gentlemen is the bible's definition of grace that right here is the most concise definition of what we call grace that the grace of god generically speaking is an expression of all of the provisions that have been made available to the believer through god but routed only through the office of the christ is called grace so grace of god is not just limited to its dimensional operation when you want to understand the grace of god it is important for you to know that grace intrinsically represents all the spiritual provisions the bible calls it all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places and it is given to the saints in and through the office of the christ that means according to the economy of the kingdom there is no other channel for accessing grace outside of the office of the christ are we together now yes this is very important so the bible says we have been blessed it never said we have been given it said we have been blessed accessing all spiritual blessings is a blessing to all believers are we together grace a lot of believers do not really understand what the grace of god is and it is the reason why we are not able to walk in the experience of this divine life so most people just think grace is limited to favor 
or grace is limited to salvation those are just the dimensional workings of grace but intrinsically when you want to understand grace you need to know that grace is a holistic capture of everything god has made available to the saints that means anointing is grace faith is grace mercy is grace speed is grace everything that can become an advantage to the believer as far as your sojourn is concerned is called grace do we understand now so when you are talking of grace you don't isolate it in pieces except if you are dealing with the operation if i look at a life and i see a prosperous person indeed this man has accessed the grace of god if i see a man manifesting extraordinary intelligence like daniel that is a manifestation of the grace of god if i see a man who is able to excel in career it is the grace of god the grace of God is like energy. Energy may not be created or destroyed, but it can be converted to several things. The same energy producing light is what will be turning a mechanical system, is what will be giving, powering this mic. It, the dimensions are different, but it is still the same energy. Isn't it interesting that you plug uh, something to your socket and then several gadgets are connected to it and they'll be performing several things all powered by the same energy. That energy is called grace. Are we, are we together now? So that when you understand that based on God's dealing with you, listen carefully. Praying for grace it's not a wise prayer because it has been made available already if it is not made manifest to your life there are men you have to troubleshoot other things but as far as the manifestation of grace is concerned the bible tells us that blessed be god and father of our lord jesus christ and he said he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places now whether your life has already captured this as a reality or not is another discussion but you must settle it for a fact are we together now that the grace of god has been made available to me for the purpose of our discussion um there are two dimensions of grace that is important for believers to understand for the purpose of our discussion this morning number one is called saving grace you may want to write that down and please pay very close attention the first dimension of grace that we want to understand tonight is called saving in grace in titus chapter 2 and verse 1 the bible talks about the grace that brings salvation and the bible says when it has to do is that did i get that right please look for it for me is it 211 to one saving grace the grace that bringeth salvation thank you 211 have appeared unto how many men Amen. the grace that brings salvation translates to salvation have appeared to all men they didn't pray for it. They didn't desire it. It appeared unto all men. Very, very powerful. The second dimension of grace theologically is called enabling grace. Write it down, please. Enabling grace. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Enabling grace. Here's what the apostle says. I can do all things. I was teaching somewhere and I said, what an arrogant statement. How can a man stand before a people and make such an arrogant statement? I can do all things. Do you know how many things there are to be done in your life and in destiny? How dare you stand to make such a statement recognizing the limitation of time? You are not omnipotent. You are not omnipresent. You are not omniscient. You do not even know the things that are waiting tomorrow. And yet, here is a man who stands in the presence of people to make such an audacious statement. I can do all things. 
In our world today, you send such a man to jail for making such a nasty statement, but he does not stop there. This is the difference between an arrogant statement in ignorance and one who is speaking from a standpoint of revelation. He said, I can do all things. And he tells you the basis of that confidence. He says, through Christ, which strengtheneth me. There is an enablement that is not intrinsic within me. It is outsourced. And that becomes the basis of my confidence. So you will see me accomplishing possibilities that are not given unto men men to accomplish. He said, when you see supernatural strife in and through my hands, the basis of it is that there is Christ. There is an anointing, an embracing that comes from God that is able to strengthen me. This is very powerful. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. One shout a loud amen. amen. And the Bible teaches us a few things about this enabling grace. It tells us that this dimension of grace can increase and it can increase as your enlightenment increases. It says grace and peace be multiplied. Are we together now? grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge knowledge the more you access light the more you give authorization for this dimension of enabling grace to multiply through you and it translates to the kinds and the levels of possibilities that you command through your life so the difference between any two people is not the love of God the same Lord is rich unto all the difference between two people is not necessarily even the election of grace it is the degree to which they have been able to access light that has translated to a higher walking of this grace in their lives when you see any two people I tell you this the distinctive difference spiritually speaking is the level of grace that is at work in them which is based on the light that they have accessed are we learning now so challenges are not generic one person can be stunted by the presence of a challenge and exhaust all that you know to do and the, the your suffering or, or, or your 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 limitation can misrepresent god in face of that challenge because there is a dimension of grace required to surmount that challenge and you have not accessed it through light another person will come and walk through that situation as if it does not exist the difference is not the power of god the difference is the grace component that is at work in your life through light so it says grace and peace be multiplied is someone learning now grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace be multiplied now but my 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 main discussion is making these realities that are available in Christ to be made manifest in our lives pastor do you know that the frustration of most believers is not lack of awareness of the provisions that are available i think we have done a good job in in the body of christ to help believers come into the consciousness of the vast promises that are available to the believer so the average believer who has been faithful in church is aware that healing is yours is am i right on that is aware that it is god's will to prosper you is aware for instance that the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more even unto the perfect day there are certain levels of ignorance that should not be found in the life of a faithful believer again because i submit to you that men and women of god have done quite a good job in bringing this superior spiritual orientation but the problem is translating those realities that we confess to become an experience here and now. This is the frustration of many believers. So while many are jumping and saying in the name of Jesus, I am aware that it is child, healing is children's bread. They are dying of sickness. You are seeing that their bodies are not responding to that confession. The body is breaking down, is deteriorating consistently. 
For instance, someone will say in the name of Jesus, I know that I am prosperous. I refuse and I reject poverty. He's saying that while he's driven out of his house for rent and he's saying that while they throw him away from his job and then he continues standing in faith and one year becomes five years becomes 30 years until his life becomes a misrepresentation if you are to study god using his life you will hate god because something does not add up is someone learning this morning i came to solve this puzzle for you why is it that there is a growing divide between the things we purport to believe which the bible attests to that are true and our experience the disciples themselves were frustrated because jesus came proposing very great things for them when he arrived he spoke about a kingdom that was superior the disciples were happy they left their jobs their professions with joy running to pursue something that was more superior at a point in their work with jesus they started complaining to one another I hope this man is not a fraudster because we don't understand this thing the way we are just going we are not having an opportunity to enjoy this supposed all the, the pictures that he painted for us and one time Peter and the rest summoned courage and they said listen we are not going to allow you cheat us like this we are adults we have left all to follow you go straight to the point what do we have to enjoy in this thing because so far we tried to heal someone we were disappointed everything we tried it looked like it was not working for us then Jesus looks at them and says no man who had left all of this and that for my sake and for the kingdoms he says but in this life he will receive this and then in the life to come life eternal Jesus was saying you need to be able to trust what I am teaching you you need to trust what you are becoming ladies and gentlemen can I tell you if we do not remedy this in the days that are coming like it is already happening in europe already happening in the u.s and in many of the western worlds there is a whole generation that is defined in our understanding about god there is a lot of theory about what god can do there is a lot of theory about the power of god our lives are full of so many propositions and remember that was what made jesus cause the fig tree the fig tree had green leaves enough to attract even Jesus even Jesus fell for that scam of the fig tree Jesus your all-knowing Jesus hungry and he saw a tree that had green leaves and he came there expecting to eat and when he came he saw the tree taken from the earth but not producing fruit and Jesus your Jesus the epitome of love cause that tree i hope you know that he calls men trees too that he shall be like a tree that is planted that means if you like a tree begin to manifest the similitude of that fig tree to attract people by making all kinds of spiritual propositions i know my god i dare you to come and sometimes we make audacious statements that are even legally wrong if you come and you are not healed i will tear my bible you know we make some kind of statement and then now i'm not being sarcastic i'm provoking you for a reason and you find out that the person says come on i don't understand i used to practice wizardry and i used to have one man behind my village at least his his margin of error was not so much now you told me to leave that and you have now proposed a superior faith practice I have come i have prayed i have given all that i've recorded for the last two years is losing my job losing my children losing everything not finishing any project see all that i've described is someone who is sitting in church this morning right now just smiling but honestly beginning to get tired 
and saying, Apostle, I, I don't know the name of this. I have no right to charge God with fraud. I have no right to say he deceived me. But someone needs to explain to me, while the more I seem to be godly, the more the gap between the experience of the kingdom. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. There is a consolation when you see results that come from the word of God. Now, I have told you, we never serve God just because of things, but make no mistakes about it. There is a consolation that comes to the believer when your life begins to command potent, ever-increasing results. Is that true? For the Bible says, where the carcasses are, it says there the eagles will gather. A hospital never calls patients. A restaurant never calls patients. It is hunger and desire that drives people there. A hospital is just equipped enough and you will find patients queue up patiently. An ATM does not talk. An ATM does not sing praise and worship. An ATM does not have a billboard. It just stands there full of money and you see people impatiently queuing for hours complaining but remaining there. That is the power of results. Listen, listen, listen. If you pay attention to what I'm teaching you, you will walk out of this conference rejoicing, knowing that I have found the key. Yeah. Hallelujah. It is the reason why many people come to church on Sunday and then they delve into all kinds of things on Monday and Tuesday and they say, well, the man is not like it's exactly bad. There are all kinds of things here. There is a Bible on his table. There are many other books. The most important thing is that he mixes everything. And while it looks very sarcastic, you don't want to know what men can do when they are bankrupt of results. When a woman who has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb for 10, 15 years, remember, two months into her wedding, she started speaking and saying, I know God will do it, don't worry. After 15 years, what she rejected, she may receive it now again. You will come and say, I told you 15 years ago. Would you want to consider this? You say, okay, let me look at it. Even Jesus got to a point where he almost aborted redemption. He said, Father, if it be thy will, pain can do something to even the most honest of people. Pain can push men to the corridors of compromise. It's easy to talk in church and say, don't do this, don't that. The cure is to show people the way to get potent results. Why will someone watch his mother dying of something and you've applied everything you said the word of God said to do and it does not seem to be working and someone from a distance is freely offering a solution. Desperation can push men. A mother will not watch her child die like that. Before you know it, they will get up and do things you cannot imagine. I will hold on through the storm And I will hold on to your word My life will soon reveal You're the lifter of men The lifter of men I will hold on through the storm Yes, I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men. Now listen, pay attention now. The assignment, listen carefully please. The assignment and the jurisdiction of grace is to give you the consciousness of the provisions that are available for you. The assignment of grace is not possession. The assignment of grace is the consciousness of the provision. You need to listen to this. The operation of grace in terms of its operation now 
is limited to supplying you information about the vast riches that have been provided for but it does not automatically translate into possession give us this scripture i hope i get it right in jesus name deuteronomy 2 24 my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men i want to show you a principle there can we have this in amplified or any okay well let's let's just work with kjv it says rise ye up thank you take your journey and pass over the valley of ammon he was talking to the children of esau behold i have given into your hand god is speaking now behold behold means see conceive as a reality in your spirit i have given into your hand sihon the amorite the king of jeshbon and his land he says i have given you but begin to possess it and contend with him in battle what kind of a statement is this i have given you as for this one you can begin to claim it it is your inheritance but he's saying as far as the experience of it is concerned you have to master the dynamics of possessing it now this man can remain defeated while he's saying i know god said it did god lie no but is he in the place now no this is the challenge with many believers the word of god says you are the head and not the tail did god lie but my life is not yet showing the experience of that headship i have given into your hand you would think by that statement you would step in and not see giants you would think by that statement you will wake up and just find a desolate land he said i have given you he was doing something to his consciousness but he says as far as the experience of dominion is concerned begin to possess it begin to possess it i have made you blessed even financially but begin to give visibility and manifestation to that speaking and if these guys failed and all through their life they never possessed it god did not lie do you know that even at the defeated state of the believer experientially speaking it does not change the integrity of the word of god it is only that most believers have not understood the entire dynamics between the prophetic speakings of God and the experiential manifestation. So many people remain disappointed. I know what I had. I know what God said. And yet their lives are never able to capture the reality of what he said. This right now is the assignment of this mystery in the scripture called faith the assignment of faith is to work with the information that grace has provided and make it become your experience please listen carefully faith has no ministry until the reality has been established as far as the grace of god is concerned but the moment grace brings to your consciousness what God has done, faith takes it from there. The assignment of faith is to transport realities from these heavenly places to your life. Watch this. If I have a tap, a tap, T-A-P, that brings water. Let's say this is my garden right here where this uh, monitor is. And that's the tap there. If I open it there, it will not reach my garden to water it. Are we together? I, there is endless supply flowing from the tap. But that is not where I need. My garden can, my crops can be starving of water. It does not stop that garden. It does not mean that there's insufficiency of water. There's insufficiency of water in my garden, not water board. Are we together? Now, the assignment of faith is to connect from that tap to where this water is needed. Are we together now? And the distance between the tap and the garden will be equal to the length of the host. There are times that you need to go and still buy another host, join it again, because by all means, you need to transfer. The assignment is to transfer this water 
isn't it amazing that right from the water board to your house water is getting there they they deploy all kinds of skill they even use a pump all kinds of things to make sure that even if you are staying in a 10-story building water from a position that may be down it gets to your kitchen it gets to your bathroom that is the assignment of faith listen carefully so this garden can have the crops shrinking and based on the testimony of that garden there is drought whereas you move to water board and they say we have never stopped supplying water what is the difference to be able to create a system that bridges that thing that's what God has come to show you this morning that it is not because the speakings of God are a lie it is that grace has done its work profitably in your life by bringing to you the consciousness of the provisions that are available in Christ but that there is a technology that translates the prophetic speakings of God from the realm of the spirit to your life and most of us have not labored in the spirit to work on this connection and so you find out that there is a great divide between what God has said and what you are experiencing if you are learning say amen, amen. what is faith let me speak for a few minutes and then we'll pray are we learning already the Bible talks about faith In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38, four scriptures really in the whole Bible where he talks about faith as far as the just is concerned. It says, now the just shall live more than just obtaining results. He says the just shall live by faith. But if any man shall draw back, my soul will not have pleasure in him. The just shall live by faith in Mark chapter 6 when you read from verse 1 to 6 the Bible talks about Jesus being surprised at the unbelief do we read that now for sake of time okay let's try it verse 2 very quickly the Bible says he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished as he's saying they were trying to ask where did this man get the kind of wisdom and look at the mighty works that accompany that wisdom verse 3 he says it is not the carpenter's son the brother of james and so on and so forth and then verse 4 we're reading to 6 the bible says jesus told them a prophet is not without honor but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house verse 5 and he could not do mighty works the Bible never said he did not do. He could not do, meaning that he attempted to do certain things. Against what you thought that everywhere Jesus went, things were just happening. There were places that the Bible does not hide that Jesus was disappointed. He was disappointed. He could not do any mighty work save that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And Jesus, the Bible says he marveled because of their unbelief that was a problem the problem was not his power the problem was not his godship being questioned that there was such unbelief in that place that not even the presence of Jesus could make any difference unbelief the word of God personified was there but unbelief made it of non effect are we together now so it is not just the presence of the word that generically produces miracles there is a technology that makes the word potent in this case the word of God personified in the Christ was there and yet nothing happened unbelief what is faith let's write a few definitions if God is helping you please say amen I'll give you two definitions very quickly. Number one, faith is absolute confidence in God and in the integrity of his word. Please write. Faith is absolute confidence in God and in the integrity of his word. 
Faith is absolute confidence in God and in the integrity of his word. That is the first definition of faith I want you to have. Absolute confidence in God. The Bible says, but I know whom I have believed. It says, and I am persuaded that he is able to commit to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. I am persuaded. A depth of confidence. Number two, which is a very important definition. Faith is the name given to the action that you take. Please underline the word action. Faith is the name given to the action that you take. Based on your conviction, faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word. The name given to the action that you take based on your conviction or in response to your conviction of who God is and the integrity of the person. Of, of his word, his person. Are we together? Faith in this sense is the name given to the action. Please someone shout the action. The action. One more time, say the action. the action. So, I always like to use this example. Can I use a gentleman? Please come, my friend. Come, you two, both of you. Please stand here facing me. Stand here, stand here. All of you watch this. Watch this. Now, you stand here, my friend. Thank you. I want to give them, can someone give me anything that looks like an envelope, a gift, something? I want to give them something. Thank you. Thank you for this. God bless you. Now, watch this. Is it true that this is real? Let's assume that there's some money here. When you use money, church people seem to understand what you are saying. Are we together now? So, the assignment, watch this now. I have no particular bias for any one of them. And based on the abundance of what I have, I can sort any one of them. Are we together now? But I am not in their dimension. This is where I am. And this is the assignment of grace to open you up and say, listen, there is such a provision here. Is someone understanding what I'm doing now? So, ordinarily speaking, they would not know. But the grace of God has appeared to them. Telling them there is healing. There is prosperity. There is a life of victory that is in Christ. But the condition, listen carefully. Now, just knowing it does not bring them into the possession of it. If I ask you now, is there healing that I'm holding? No, sir. No, no, yes, I'm holding it. It's just that it's not in your life. You get the point now. Are you aware that I'm holding this envelope? Yes. Are you aware that I'm holding this envelope? Yes, sir. Is it in your hands? One year, two years, 15 years. You started learning this when you were a teenager. Now you are about to be a grandfather. You have not yet come into the possession. You will start teaching your children too. Don't ever doubt if they tell you there is an envelope. I remember when I was 12 years. It is not knowing that there is an envelope. It is accessing it and enjoying what is there. Are you getting the point now? Now watch this. I define faith as number one your confidence in God so you have to believe that I'm not scamming you and that is why the Bible is a compendium of God's integrity tested through different dispensations he gave us the right to probe and vet him and find out whether he's worthy of our believing him from Genesis to Revelation the Bible does not hide anything about God as far as his dealings with men is concerned so that we can vet him and find out whether he's worthy of our trust. The second definition, the name given to the action that you take. Believers, God is showing you where we have been missing it now. The action that you take. So it is true that you believe there is such a reality. But now, here is the instruction. And two of you, I want you to do something for me. I will start with you. I'm going to ask you to come and receive this. I want you to do any other thing. If you want, go there. If you like, stroll. If you like, sit down. But don't come. You get your, your own now. We're acting a drama now. And then for you, 
when it's your turn and I say come I want you to walk gallantly and come and receive it ready so this guy got born again before this guy are we together now and now here is the instruction connected to accessing this if you can walk from where you are and come and meet me it is yours let's start he's taking action but is it an action of obedience look at this 1991 1992 1993 blaming technology blaming change of government he's doing so many things with his life and i'm here standing and you are learning God using his life and you continue getting angry with me because this is the template of me you are studying from are you seeing that now you are using a very this man's life is misrepresenting my love misre when you study scripture and find out what God has said and you look at the life of a supposed believer it does not seem to add up now watch this for 15 years this guy's pain starts editing the theology of God's integrity because pain can start re-editing. Maybe God did not really mean this. Now imagine that this guy is a pastor and you are a member in his church. He will use his pain to start doctoring certain things about God. Are we together? Listen carefully. And then here comes this gentleman who came to Olive Brook Church from January and had the opportunity to receive God's word and now he's learned that there is a responsibility component to accessing your inheritance now gentlemen walk come and pick it up watch this this guy will turn and say this is not fair I've been in this thing for 33 years based on what did you come and just access this healing anointing speed prosperity it is unfair you are not supposed to be in this position they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he says but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes could this be you i just described could this be your business could this be your finances could this even be your ministry the effect of this kind of life is pain that translates to envy and jealousy and anger and this man may even turn away from the things of God like Peter I go back to the village I've tried this God thing and it does not seem to work ladies and gentlemen God sent me here this morning to tell someone before you turn back listen there is a way out that is a way out. So this gentleman has accessed this. You find him walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. That's his testimony. What kind of a life is this guy commanding? He's walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. In three years, starting his company, he's already global. In one year of coming into Abuja, attracting strange dimensions of favor, what kind of a life is this? I tell you, the difference is not the love of God. The difference is not the provisions that grace has made available. The difference is the faith component. This man has taken the time to understand the dynamics of translating prophetic speakings to their experiential manifestation. He's walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. Are you prophesying to your life? That I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am 
one more time someone speak it to your life i'm walking in abundance moving with the speed of the holy ghost Please sit down. Gentlemen, God bless you. Is someone learning at this service? I'm trying to be as simple as possible because I want everybody to get this. That as you leave this service, you can know that so this thing is not a God problem. This is the missing link. You can run back home and say, Mama, I found the key. While we cry every night and we say, God, when will you hear me? No, a very sympathetic prayer, but it has no power on its own. The power component as far as the manifestation of God's word in the believer's life is faith. Let's talk a bit more about faith. Please write. Bible faith is predicated upon two attributes of God. Please write. I pray that those outside are listening and following because someone's life is truly about to change. And those who are following from across the globe, following online, I want you to pay attention. The Lord may be speaking to you even at this morning's service. Faith, Bible faith is predicated upon two attributes of God. There are two attributes of God you must understand to have Bible faith. Please write it. Number one, his integrity. The first attribute of God upon which Bible faith is built is called his integrity numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 very quickly the bible says god is not a man that he should lie never forget that statement god became a man for our sake but he's not a man are we together god is not a man that he should lie that means men don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. You know what a lie is? A lie is to say anything you do not have the power to defend. A lie does not just mean an untrue statement. A lie means anything you say without the wherewithal to make it good is a lie. You have the track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it now. A lie is not necessarily an untrue statement. When the Bible says God cannot lie, it doesn't mean God cannot say what is untrue because he calls things that be not as though it was. What it means is that anything God says, his power is sufficient to make it become what he has said. So based on that, God cannot lie. So if God calls a weak man strong, it will not be a barren statement because within his economy is sufficient power to turn that man to be strong. Are we together now? So men lie not necessarily because of the untruthfulness of their speaking but they are so impotent in themselves there are many things they will say that will not happen God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent the Bible says that by these two immutable things it is impossible for God to lie impossible 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 Jesus said he would die and come back to life. That would have been a lie if after three days he was still in the grave. But on the third day, the power that raised Christ from the dead, the Bible says the angel came, rolled the stone and sat on it. And the master came out with gallancy and honor, folded his clothes from the graveyard. I've said it that order can start even from the grave. He didn't rush out. There's no reason to rush when you are king. He folded his clothes and came out. And a woman came out and saw him and said, Rabboni, she was about to touch him. He said, do not touch me, but be my first evangelist. Go to the doubting disciples who would later become my apostles. Tell them what you have seen. Let me accent to my father first. There is a coronation that is waiting for me. The Lord said to my Lord, when he ascended to heaven, 
The Bible lets us know that he went and poured his blood in that heavenly tabernacle to make atonement. Because you see, according to the laws of atonement, the validity of the atonement equals the age of the lamb that died. So the lamb was always one years old. So the, the validity period will be one years old. But now an ageless lamb now poured his blood and poured it upon that to know how long your atonement it is to know the age of the lamb that died. No wonder they say worthy is the lamb that was slain. No other lamb was worthy. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us these sevenfold redemption realities, honor, riches, wisdom, and so on and so forth. Is someone learning this morning? So faith is predicated upon number one, the integrity of God. Find a way of indoctrinating yourself to believe that God cannot lie. Hmm. Apostle, but the child has still not come. God cannot lie. Apostle, I've been to Abuja 10 years. God cannot lie. Elizabeth, I've waited so much. God cannot lie. How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? For starters, Mary, I'm about to give you an instruction that does not make sense, but find a way of convincing yourself that God cannot lie. Someone prophesy to your doubt. God cannot lie. Prophesy to every fear that has surrounded your life. God cannot lie. Man of God, let the, the mockery that ministry seems to be shouting towards your face hear you speak. God cannot lie. Listen, I believe this thing I told you, not because I'm a preacher, honestly. I have believed it through pain. I have believed it through joy. I know that God cannot lie. When God tells you something, any other thing that stands before you, begin to wave it goodbye in advance. Because most people do not know the power that is exerted when God speaks. God cannot lie. Bible faith is based on that revelation. But the second attribute of God that sponsors Bible faith in the believer is his ability, right? His integrity and his ability. The word integrity comes from the word integer. It means same within as without. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. So God is not something else in terms of consistency of character. But then you can have integrity and sadly not have ability. I give you an instance. You can come and meet somebody and say, please, can you give me one million naira for my house rent? The person can say, sincerely, I want to help you. But the only challenge is that I don't have that kind of money now. That person has integrity. He's not corrupt. He's not playing you. Unfortunately, he may not have ability. It is painful to have integrity and not have ability. Oh. Oh, 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 he saved oh, 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 he saved oh. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him, not unto everybody, unto him, who is able to do everybody say able to do yes. there are men who are able to say but they are not able to do there are men who are able to advise but they are not able to do the capacity for performance is what defines ability are we together now yes 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 able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think this is a god that you serve ladies and gentlemen he is not just a god of integrity they came to jesus and said if you be willing you can help my son he said i am willing not only willing but i have the power you want to know how powerful God is? Ask Pharaoh. You want to know how God, powerful God is? Ask Darius. Ask Nebuchadnezzar. You want to know how powerful God is? 
ask the Hittites, the Perizzites, ask all of them. They sang the song of Miriam that I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The God that breathes upon a sea and parts it hither and thither and causes people to walk on dry ground. Once upon a time, a foolish man mocked at God and said, even if you open the windows of heaven, Samaria will not be saved in one day. And he said, you will see it as a testimony that God does not lie, but you will not partake of it. Ah, the Bible says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions, that women who received their death back to life. God is able to do just what he says he will do he's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on Watch this. There are men who want to give you jobs. Their integrity is not in question, but they do not have the influence, the financial wherewithal. There are many people who will see others and say, oh, I wish I had something to do. God does not have that ability to sit down and regret. Not when power, once have I spoken and twice have you heard, help me Olive Brook, that all power, all power, all power, all power the power to heal the power to prosper the power to restore the power to bring speed the power to raise a champion out of a family that has never risen the power to lift up your head it says i lay me down and i slept i wait for the lord who is all powerful sustain me It was Paul who was mentoring the church in Ephesus in chapter 1 of Ephesians. When you read from verse 16 to 19, he cried unto the God of our Father and he began to pray for the church. And here was the content of his prayer. Ephesians 1 from verse 16, he says that for this cause I, Paul, that I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are we together? And verse 17 now, let's finish up to 19. He says that he may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 18 says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Amplified says flooded with light that you may know the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. I like 19. He says and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word. When I, when I, when I, when I, when I read scriptures like this, it just tears up praise in my heart. Yabo dagazuchiya, yabo dagazuchiya, yabo dagazuchiya, napa. Maybe somewhere when I start praying for you, I will invite Solomon Lange to sing. There's a line in that song that I like. Hallelujah. Uh, he said, when the arm of flesh will fail them. Because the arm of flesh is very weak. Very weak. Very weak. But there is a strong, multi-breasted one. At the gate of death and Hades. He said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, O ye ancient doors. And the ancient doors responded back. They were alive. Who is this king of glory? He said. <laughs> and there was a response. The Lord. Not the Lord wise. Uh -uh. This is not an issue of wisdom. The Lord strong. Strong over my family. Strong over my destiny. How dare you say I will not make it in life. You need to know the one who stands behind me as a mighty terrible one can i tell you hear me olive brook 
listen to me for someone you have come from a family where it is fashionable to look down on people like the nazarenes nathaniel looks and he hears about jesus and he says can anything good come out of nazareth he was not lying go and find out about the nazarenes they don't have longevity of impact ask the man called samson they rise and they fall so he said jesus this is only a fly by night he will not last When the angel came and met Zachariah and told him about John, he had to shut his mouth as a priest until he agreed with God. When they gave him the name, he said, nobody has been called in that family by this name. By what means should you be called Victor? By what means should you be called champion? By what means should you be called prosperous? It is a foreign experience in this family. And the Bible says God shut the mouth of all the naysayers until they came to a point where they agreed. When Zechariah wrote the name John, his mouth opened. It is within the power of God to shut the mouth of all the people who distract you and say, forget about this lady. It's all this zeal that church gives people. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, do not forget all that I have taught you. I'm teaching you now on faith that your confidence in God is predicated upon your awareness of his ability. Ability. Read your Bible and see what God did with men. God stopped kings from sleeping because he wanted to bless other people. Is that not in your Bible? God took village girls and cleared every other lady out of the way, insisted that they got into the palace. Is it not in your Bible? God took a prisoner who had been blackmailed and lied to by Potiphar's wife, forgotten by the wine presser. When it was time, God gave the king a dream and shot the heaven over the sorcerers. Nobody could see anything until that gentleman was fished out from the prison and he became a prime minister hours later. Maybe I should give you more credentials of this all-powerful God. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. It says, from whence cometh my help. Watch this now. He says, my help. He never said our help. It is costly to assume everybody is depending on God. This is a personal declaration. My help cometh from the Lord. Watch this. The Lord, the maker. I like that word maker do you know what it means to make when you want to talk about making men may not understand it so much let me talk to the ladies a bit when you enter the kitchen to make rice there are ingredients whatever it is that you use is what I'm talking about <laughs> are we together now and a woman enters with confidence just tells you be patient for two hours sit in the parlor while I make rice and begins to combine this salt this fire and at the end of it the aroma from the parlor is what lets you know that this making is almost done so when the bible calls god a maker you know what that means he takes your past your life your family the bad report and he begins to do what the bible says for we know that all things all things At the end of it, he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies and says, the maker, the maker is ready. This is not motivation. This is spiritual reality if you believe. So I will not be surprised if by next week, someone returns to church pastor holding his hand on his head and saying after this conference i returned back and someone told me i'm about leaving nigeria i've been looking for a nigerian director for my company and the spirit of god said i should give you the keys to the company manage the company while i'm away it would be foolish to not believe that cannot happen did he not give one five talent two talent one talent and traveled and left them Now, there is one more attribute about God that helps you to believe him. It is the word Abba. The fatherhood of God is the final seal 
Do you know what it means to be father? In scripture, the proof of fatherhood is not having children. The proof of fatherhood is the ease with which you give. When God has integrity, has all power, and is a giver, there is no reason to fear again. He said, if you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give? You are not a father if you just have children. If you are greedy, you are not Abba. The word Abba means source, sustainer, defender, protector. That is the meaning of the word Abba. So I am aware that this God of the universe has integrity, that God is all powerful. El Shaddai, he is called. And then now it becomes a family affair. My interest is protected through relationship. Do you know what it means to be father? When pastor's child comes to meet him in the office or wherever, he does not come. You may have to queue because you are attending to your pastor. And they can just run and push everybody, including you, and go and hug the father. And based on what he has done, relationship makes what he has done to be no offense. If you do this, the protocol may query you and say, no, respect authority. And they are right. But now here comes someone whose past is relationship and he's able to move behind every veil of limitation and he goes to the father. Listen to what he told the prodigal son. The elder brother came and he was angry and said, this guy was a rebel and he ran away. I've been faithful in the house here and you did not even give me a little kid to celebrate with my friends. Now this guy who went to spend all his money with prostitutes and you are aware that this, you, you, you don't even know whether he came back home with HIV. You didn't verify. You just started cutting lambs for him. And the father made a statement. He said, son, you are always here with me and everything I have, everything, everything I have in this kingdom, we are not given ownership, but we are given access. Owners are rebels. To own means you want it in your name. To have access means it is limitless for you. In the Garden of Eden, they were not given ownership. You may eat of every tree. It's not yours. There's no ownership. The prodigal son wanted it in his name. And that's when lack started. God does not give us ownership. He gives us access. Listen carefully. The earth is the Lord's. He has chosen to give you access to it. I wish I had time. I would have taught you what the Bible calls the blessing of Abraham. Another time God will grant us grace. But you see, do you know what happened between God and Abraham? Most people thought he just gave Abraham the earth. No, no. The covenant between God and Abraham was based on two things. One, Abraham became the Abraham of God. Then God became the God of Abraham. Do you know what it means, the Abraham of God? Covenant that you and your seed will look unto me alone as father, as supply. Do not turn to idols. Do not turn to anything. If you make up your mind to serve me and love me and lead a generation to follow me, here is my covenant. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. I will make your name great. I will curse him that curseth you. Them that bless you, I will bless. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And Abraham said, yes, you will be my only God. I've made this covenant with you. And God carried the earth and gave Abraham as an estate. The three top religions in the world came out from the same man. Judaism, Islam, Christianity, all came out from the same person Abraham it doesn't matter what you serve the foundation of your understanding spirituality will still be routed through that mysterious man Abraham the earth belongs to him to a point that when Jesus came he had to submit to that order as that seed that was talked about 
the only basis of our partaking of the Abrahamic blessing is through Christ. Galatians 3 29. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, the Bible says, and heirs according to the promise. It is only through Christ. How can God carry the earth and give one man where there were other men? That is the power of the covenant. Are we together? We're about to pray. Listen very carefully. Someone came to church today and you've been asking, why are things not working in my life? Listen carefully. In one word, faith is obedience. In one word, faith is obedience. From the example that I gave with the gentleman who came here, the difference between madness and coming my direction is that there was a prior instruction. I said, come. In John chapter 2, the first recorded miracle of Jesus, according to John's synoptic account, the Bible says there was no wine. Embarrassment was imminent in that wedding. Are we together? And then the disciples went and met Mary. And she said, whatever he says to do, that you do it. Jesus gave a very strange instruction. He said, Fix, fill six pots with water. And when he filled six pots, he said, now take that risk. Listen, let me tell you, in those days, they did not do counseling. You would die when you offend authorities. As simple as that. You don't carry water and take it to the rulers. You know the embarrassment that would mean? And Jesus said, just go, trust me. Trust me. Look at the person talking to you. Integrity, ability. Forget about the water you are seeing. Trust me. And they fetched that water and started moving. Do you know the risk? Lord, are you aware that my life is on the line? You are telling me to move to Lagos, whereas all my life I've been in Kaduna, I've been in Benway. You are asking me to leave UK and come to Nigeria just when I'm not sure of the government. What kind of risk is this? It's like taking the water, the Bible says, as they went. The miracle happens as faith is being manifested, not before. Lord, change the water, let me see, then I will start. No, the signs follow. They don't go before. Them that believe have to go forward first, then the signs follow. Listen carefully. They fetch the water and the people started going. Today might be my last day. Today might be my last day. They may hang me, but I trust this one. And the Bible says, as they went, a miracle began to happen. And when the rulers tasted it, they said, where did you hide this? How, how can it be that we come for a feast, we've been here, and then you refuse to bring the best wine? Now you are bringing it. I'm sure the people will be smiling and taking the glory and just smiling as though it was their own creativity. Imagine the contracts those people will get from that wedding. Who would not want somebody to serve that kind of wine? The Bible may not say that, but by intelligence. I mean, if somebody, it will be on the news everywhere. A group of frail young men, not having any power of their own, brought wine that has pleased the king. No wonder they look at us and they say we are mighty. But it is the foolishness of fetching that water and taking the risk with our lives. Lord, you mean I can serve the gospel to the nations as incapacitated as we are in our strength. That's why when people say anything that looks good, we direct it to the king of kings because we are aware he only gave an instruction and we obeyed. Do you have the power to turn water to wine? You? No. Do you have the power to turn someone from darkness to light? You? No. Do you have the power to cause a generation to hear your voice and listen attentively? No. But whatsoever he says to do, do it. Listen. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 and we begin to pray. The Bible says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day. He says that the Lord God will exalt thee above all the nations of the earth. I read this scripture many years ago. And from that one small room, I believed it. When I looked at it, I truly believed it. 
and he says all these blessings shall come upon you I believed it I made up my mind as a man of God that I was not only going to raise a spiritual people I was going to raise people of tremendous global influence I believe that but just believing blindly is absolute nonsense in the realm of the spirit you must be able to tie it to what God has said that is the basis for the release of power and I found Genesis 17 verse 6 he says 17 verse 6 give it to us Genesis 17 and verse 6 read it please as a prophetic word for yourself one to read and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee now but you see just claiming the word will not do you good you have to find out the role you have to play please listen this as simple as it is is the missing link in our faith equation there is always something to do i was telling my people at the miracle service on sunday that the love of god for the believer is unconditional but his promises are highly conditional his promises are highly conditional one more time his promises are highly conditional why are they conditional because he must respect your will he cannot assume you are excited to obey so he leaves the condition so that your obedience proves you are in partnership with him your obedience does not add to what he's doing your obedience gives access so that what he has said will be made good in your life he told the man go and wash in Siloam even though he knew he was a blind man how do you tell a blind man to go to Siloam to wash why don't you save him the stress when you are an all-powerful God just open his eyes and let the man go and you burden the man with another instruction as a blind man put more than spittle in his eyes and say go to Siloam because your act of taking that step proves that you believe me he tells a man who has never walked he said get up he didn't say help him get up pick your mat and walk how does God speak like that there will always be something that God will say to do as an expression of your faith for instance there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to penury that does not make sense how do you scatter and increase that looks like a scam you just want to manipulate my finances you see the bible says just as you do not know the way of the wind nor how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child so also you do not know the way of the lord i was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and we were examining the miracle working power of god how that a woman will receive a fragile seed microscopic into her womb and from that seed will come a real baby whose bones you cannot break with your hand that is a mystery and that baby will grow one day to become a warrior who can lift buildings and lift cars from that seed so when God speaks you have no idea what you just carried when you can nurture that seed with faith it can grow to become anything that God has said disobedience is the missing link behind the prophetic speakings of God and their experiential manifestation most believers have not assumed the responsibility component of faith that when God speaks there is a part of his speaking where you have to play an act participatory role so God has spoken to you as a man of God that you are going to be great you will be singing and speaking his purposes to the nations just knowing that and relaxing like that you are going to find out that that word will never come to pass you take that is the word that will drive you and be behind your diligence as you are learning scripture and building yourself laboring in word and doctrine you are partnering with that prophecy are we together God tells you that one day you will be among kings and you say if I'm going to be among kings I should train my mind you get up and go and do your masters and do your PhD that act of developing yourself is an act of faith partnering with prophecy most people do not take action and they sit down and blame God 
you know you came from a family where no one has risen and God says I'm going to connect you to strategic people let me tell you what to do with that prophecy just saying amen and sitting down the good people will come but you're not understanding the principles of human relations will make you to drive the good people from your life if I were you while that prophecy is coming I will go online how to maintain strategic relationships as you are studying that act of studying is called faith you are preparing are we together now most believers do not know what to do with the Word of God when you receive the Word of God you don't just stay there you now begin to make room because the vessel will always make the anointing look small or large the anointing can look small based on the shape of the vessel carrying it when she came and met the prophet he said go and expand your capacity Man of God, you are trusting God for nations to place a demand upon the grace of your life. I know you had a dream. I know you saw a scripture. But if your capacity is small, the Bible says an heir for as long as he's a child. Is that in your Bible? That he differed not from a slave even though he be Lord of all. Your capacity is too small for God to trust you with the burden and the responsibility of mentoring nations. You will be a casualty to a generation. So the mercy of God is what will make him to limit you and keep you. When you expand capacity, Joseph, how do you want to stand before Pharaoh when you have not mastered the art of interpreting dreams to the kings? God will not put his reputation at stake because of your unpreparedness. So Joseph, while you are interpreting the wine presser's dream and the baker's dream, that is an act of faith preparing for the day of honor. David, while you are killing the lion and killing the bear, realize that the ultimate goal is to bring down Goliath and become king. Stephen, keep serving tables as an act of faith because one day you will be promoted to a position of honor and nobility. Let me tell you what happens in church. For many of us, we know that the grace of God is available. We will quote everything God has said to do, but we do every other thing, but ignore the responsibility component. Just the revelation alone that all blessings come from God through men to men. No matter how disadvantaged you are, if you know God and you learn how to keep relationships, you can earn a living just by those two mysteries. Just loving God and knowing what to do with men. You may have heard me say in this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But believe me, who likes you matters. A king likes a woman, she becomes a queen immediately. He hates another woman, she leaves the palace immediately. God has brought many strategic relationships to your life that were supposed to fulfill the prophecy he gave you. But you're not paying the price to understand what to do with relationships. Have destroyed great opportunities and then we blame God and say Lord when will my word come hallelujah yes. when I found this I took responsibility over my life every time God speaks to me there are two things I look for number one to receive what he has said to conceive it as a reality into my spirit the next thing is I begin to pray show me the responsibility component of that prophecy what do I need to engage in partnership with God to make it work are we together yes. if I've prayed and I've asked God to bring kings I must know how to raise kings I must know how to build kings ladies and gentlemen I hope God is speaking to someone we're about to pray Believers, do not allow the word of God to be null and void in your life because of your not understanding the responsibility component. Faith is obedience. Faith is responsibility. Faith is not just saying what God has said. Faith is doing what God has said. The power is released at the point of doing as they went for the lepers he said go and show yourself to the priest the bible said as they went not before they went the four lepers who brought salvation to samaria as they got up and began to move the lord amplified their efforts and made their enemies to hear the sounds of chariot planted all kinds of imaginations in their minds apostle god has called me into the healing ministry what do i need to do just get up and organize a crusade. Be prepared for embarrassment. 
I, I assure you, you will be alone on that crusade ground. It will be as if God did not send you. Because that is not how God lifts men. When God tells you he's giving you a healing ministry, the first thing is to take time and believe it into your spirit. Then number two, look for them who through faith and patience, there are always some them to follow. Because Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. In spite of the fact that he was called a savior, he could not be savior as a baby. God told him he was savior. He needed to allow age to justify that prophecy. And while he was waiting for age, he kept doing certain things. At age 13, he was in the temple. All that motivated him was the prophecy. You would see Jesus working so hard, you would be in doubt. Are you really the word? How could the word be learning this much? How could the word be asking so much questions? He was preparing because a day would come, Satan would come and test him. And he needed to build capacity with the, it is written that will give him victory show me what you are doing James said show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith by the works I'm doing are we together most people are not partnering with prophecy I submit to you ladies and gentlemen behind every champion who who you see the grace of God working in their heart is an investment of diligence diligence when I heard the song that um, Solomon Lange was singing here. I've not even heard that song. I said, ah, these people, they keep bringing songs. Now, I know that you say the grace of God has worked, but go and find out when people sit in the night while you are sleeping, writing songs. You know how many sermons I prepare in a week? You have no idea. Believe me. I've not slept for up to two hours or three hours. In truth, I will tell you, from yesterday into today. The service in the evening, there are several other things to do. That's how the grace you are talking about works. There are many lazy people wanting multiplied grace out of nothing and wondering why destiny. Let me tell you, people who acknowledge the working of God's grace have the power to force any door that closes. There's no time discussing anything. When one door closes, they force another one to open by faith. Show me a man you think has the grace of God and behind the working of that grace, I show you diligence as proof of faith. Diligence in prayer, diligence in the study of the word, diligence in building capacity. I came into your church and I saw excellence. I saw everything being done right. That is the grace of God working upon your man of God. I am what I am by the grace of God, Paul said. But this grace was not showered upon me in that I labored more than ye all. Yet not I, but the grace of God. This was the testimony of the man who was an epitome of of grace businessman let me tell you you have not allowed the potential of the grace of God to speak in your life truly you know why because you have not backed it up with obedience diligence show me the business book you have read as proof that you believe you're a kingdom financier show me the millionaire you have honored and sat under to constructively learn mentorship as proof that you want the word of God to work in your life. Young man, I'm not excelling in ministry. Show me who you have submitted to learn, to understand the principles of ministry. What do you know about organization? What do you know about leadership? What do you know about people skills? What do you know about homiletics? The sound exegesis of scripture. What do you know about managing the variety of people? What do you know about excellence? Don't say no member is coming to your church. God is not a fool. Are, are you learning now? I hope I'm not too harsh. Sorry, eh? we we'll apologize after the grace, but I need to press this into your heart. I come and I see the shop that you are saying is global. It is dirty. It is unkept. You wake up by 10 o'clock. You close by 2 o'clock for a flimsy reason of a runny stomach. And there's someone in your house. I come to buy something in your shop. It is closed. And yet you are there saying, Apostle, thank you. Thank you so much. Apostle, why is it that God is not lifting me? I want to be like Walmart. I want to be like these guys. Go and see how people make use of the grace of God by engaging faith. You have a healing meeting tomorrow you are watching football in the night i know god will do it i'm not the healer 
you will be disappointed and surprised by the next day i'm not being sarcastic i'm showing you what unbelievers do even without the backing of grace and what many believers do not do the diligence component of faith is what we need to obtain grace to return back in go and sweep your one room as proof that you believe god will give you an estate go and dress it and make it look like the palace you are trusting god to get to are we together you are a worshiper sit down and start writing songs don't say if god wants to give me he will give me there's something called inspiration put a worship song in your atmosphere sit with a biro and a paper expecting to write write it and ask a professional look at this song can i edit it they will remove a few unscriptural things there and begin to prime your creativity you're a man of god prepare sermons even if you don't have an invitation because you do not know when pharaoh will call you joseph the bible says to be instant in season and out of season is god speaking to someone go and train yourself build capacity someone will sit down and say let me give you five minutes tell us what you can do in five minutes and in five minutes you market yourself with diligence let me tell you when faith is at work it makes grace beautiful let me repeat it again when faith is at work it makes grace beautiful Bazanji kumyaba Bazanji kumyaba This is how we were taught how to put the grace of God to work. So every time God speaks, he said, my father walketh he that toe, I walk. My father walketh he that toe, I walk. My father walketh he that toe, I walk. Look at Jesus as our perfect model. Show me any point of laziness and laxity in the life of Jesus. That was the epitome who was full of grace and truth. Jesus would get up in the morning and pray. And the moment he was done praying, he would be on his way going. There are many men of God, respectfully speaking, who have not begun ministry in fact, but the sheer level of laziness. You preach one message for three hours, you sleep for two weeks to rest. What have you done? And yet you are trusting, oh God, let me be everywhere. Don't you think it will kill you? Will you be able to stand it? Esther, I know God told me one day I'll be sitting near Ahasuerus. With this version of you, you are joking. Go and look for Haggai, the man who transforms Hadassah, the village girl, to Esther, who is worthy of Ahasuerus. It was not the village girl. If she had stood before the king, he would even punish Haggai for bringing such a woman. Between prophecy and manifestation was one year of rubbing a kind of oil. Hey guy called and said, forget what the other women are doing. I suspect you'll be the queen, but not like this. The king is not stupid. There's something about his eyes. Let me walk on you. And the king began to walk. Hey guy began to walk. I know the king. I have access to the chamber. I know what the king wants. Let me reproduce what the king wants in you. And in Esther chapter 2 and verse 17, the Bible says when Esther showed up before Ahasuerus, Esther 2.17, it says, and the king loved Esther above all the women, meaning there were others before her arrival, but not when Esther the prepared. Esther full of faith. That's how grace works. She, immediately, the Bible says her preparation made her to obtain grace grace is that in your bible and favor in the sight more than all the virgins they were others just like there are others before you show up oh there were others in abuja you are not here for competition but the truth is that faith gives visibility to grace faith gives visibility to grace there are people i came in and i saw so many people outside 
you're watching you are following me right now you left your homes some of you bent over backwards to be here in this conference did you know that your act of leaving your home sitting in the sun sitting in this place is an act of faith it is proof that you know God will not leave you the way you came how could you go back the way you came you have done your own part by coming I'm sure there is a man of God here who left everything to come and sit down to say apostle I know there is there is a kind of oil there is an anointing that I'm looking for maybe a music minister who has come here saying listen doors don't seem to be opening but if you just sat down there lazily and said well I know after all God can come and meet me in my room it doesn't work that way you have come so in the next five minutes as we pray that that grace will rest upon you now that you have activated it through faith ask any great man they remember where God took them from everywhere that I go everything that I do all I see is grace everywhere that I go Everything that I do, hey, all I see is I like, I like the Hausa version of that song. Have a mama You see, this grace, eh? In one day, when the grace of God is truly allowed to find expression. The grace of God can take the prayer request of a man's lifetime. I really mean it without exaggeration. And bring it to the faith of one who walks by faith. Not one who is just waiting for it to walk. There are testimonies that will not, it will not be wisdom to share some things here because it would destroy the goal of what we are doing. There are testimonies that motivate, there are testimonies that can discourage again, if not managed. But believe me when I tell you, there is no limit to what the grace of God can do. When that grace meets faith at work, most of us have abused the grace of God because the faith component, faith there meaning your obedience, understanding the role you have to play in actualizing this. Anything you find in scripture, don't just say I receive a loan. Go back and say what is the role I have to play. Joseph, if God has told you that you will be a prime minister, behave yourself wisely. Conduct yourself well and take care of the wine presser and the baker in the prison because they will be the ladders who will speak to the king for you. Daniel, make sure you purpose in your heart not to defile yourself with the king's meat according to 1 verse 8, Daniel. Make sure you behave yourself wisely because you are going to be a ruler even through the dispensation of about four to six kings. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego if you believe in the God of heaven then make sure you do not stand and compromise bowing down to that stature even if it will cost you your life time will fail me the Bible says to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak the, the, the chronicles of this man Hebrews 11 is not just a faith chronicle it's a grace chronicle but the grace was manifested by those who walked by faith it says now faith is the substance of the things hoped for it calls it the evidence or the tangibility of the things not seen he said for by it the elders that means you are not qualified to be called an elder until you show us your good report every elder is not an elder just by age you must show us the exploits of faith I have translated the grace of God from this to this many years ago true story i was sitting near a soccer way and i saw a plane move i'd never entered a plane in my life before that time many many years ago and i looked at it and i just smiled i said my god many people are in that plane for many reasons others the leverage of their parents sacrifice others corruption others wickedness others are terrorists going to destroy other people many reasons and then I remember the Lord spoke to me and said, my word will put you in this. Yes. 
Once upon a time in this very Abuja, I would be coming from Zaria and I would come and arrive at a particular park. And once I arrived, there was a small restaurant close to it there. I liked their food because it was very delicious and it was cheap. I would enter there, smuggle myself into that restaurant. I can't even remember what I used to eat. I would just eat and then I would get up in the strength, you know, like Elijah went in the strength of what he ate and do my business in Abuja. And then one time, I think it was last year, we were graduating a school of ministry students and I needed to do a photo shoot with them. So they were hurriedly bringing me there. And as I was passing the same place, the restaurant has been, I think they've, they've removed the place or so. And I looked at that place and I remember there was a bank facing it and I just nodded my head. All I see is grace. I see grace. All I see is grace. Look, there is nowhere you cannot go. There is nothing you cannot handle when the grace of God is upon your life. I will tell you again, ladies and gentlemen, we are what we are by the grace of God, but that this grace was not showered upon us in vain, in that we took advantage of the consciousness of the provisions that come by grace, and we acted upon it in obedience by faith. So here's how the Bible puts it, by grace, true faith. By grace, true faith. One more time, by grace, true faith the assignment of grace is to give you access the assignment of faith is to give you possession you need access and possession to equal experience it is access plus possession that equals experience by grace we are saved by grace we are healed by grace you have an enviable destiny but faith now begins to show you the participatory role the obedient response to the word of god so that god would now make good his speakings concerning your life let's stop here at this conference please rise up on your feet as we pray i want to please plead with solomon lange to just come and sing that grace song once and then once he sings it i will just pray as he sings it i just want you to take the time meditate let that song please as much as possible just allow him do the singing and let him just let him just i think you'll be able to play go ahead listen carefully to that song mm. let it just soak into your spirit yes sir amazing grace is the sweetest sound Saved my life. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. You took my shame, you took my pain. Jesus gave me. Yeah. 
by might, it's by the Spirit of the Lord. The arm of flesh will always fail, but divine help is what I enjoy. I'm not afraid of tomorrow. I have faith. with this consciousness that the grace of God is at work in your life but now you know the missing component as you walk full of grace Lord what do I need to do with what you have said you have called me the head and not the tail but leaving it there will not make it good in my life I obtain grace where is the responsibility component and it's interesting that I taught you that there is a dimension called the enabling grace there is an energizing from the spirit that empowers you to now do to now walk to now pray to now study to now give your very best wherever you are in the next one minute i like you to cry for the grace to do the grace to do go ahead lift your voice and pray grace for total obedience total obedience that all you demand from me to do to make good your word i obtain grace someone is praying olive brook are you praying those outside make sure you are praying following by way of the internet make sure you are praying by grace through faith by grace through faith you're lifting by grace through faith you're rising by grace through faith hallelujah hallelujah faith is your action of, obedi of obedience that you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his person our time is fast spent I will just speak over your life and then we're done and in speaking we'll just do it at once I will just speak whether you are trusting God for healing you are trusting God for an open door prophetic declarations are powerful the Bible says and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved prophetic words are not just pronunciations Prophetic words move beyond the realm of your hearing to the realm of the spirit. They program and they create possibilities. He says, I have been commanded to bless. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm going to stand in faith with the angel over this house and his dear wife and indeed the corporate anointing in this place just to speak over our lives. I want you to please receive. Receive expecting to return with a testimony. Do you believe that? Yes. yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the Olive Brook Church. Thank you for Pastor Jibril and his precious wife. Thank you because you have allowed us the opportunity to serve your grace, your wisdom, your power, even to your people. Thank you for the many people who have come gathered here today, scattered across this auditorium and outside, the many more who are following online. I declare, oh God, that every prophetic word that comes out from now, let it be backed up by your power and let it produce potent results. In the name of Jesus. Now I decree and declare over your life 
as a church and as individuals in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god everything that represents shame and represents reproach in your life it comes to an end now it comes to an end now it comes to an end now i decree and declare that everything that looks like delay delay it looks like you've been stagnated in one position not going forward i prophesy to you according to exodus 14 12 to 14 in the name of jesus go forward go forward go forward go forward go forward go forward in the name of jesus let me declare psalm 112 over your life the bible says blessed is the man that feared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed shall be mighty upon the earth i pray for your children in the name of jesus they will not be small in the name of jesus they will not be mediocre and then he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and yet his righteousness endures forever in the name that is above all names every door that has been closed towards your life please hear me i declare over you this week this week not next week i prophesy that those doors are open now And the axe head fell and they said alas master it was borrowed and he said where fell it let me pray for someone who is owing in debt or any kind of financial trouble by the power of the prophetic i decree and declare may god use men to bring you out of that tragic situation in the name of jesus christ the bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon god uses men to lift men i don't know which human vessel has been programmed by god to partner with the spirit for your rising but in the name of jesus wherever they are i command them to show up in your life i command them to show up in your destiny in the name of jesus christ And David said, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And they called on a man called Ziba, sent him to Lodeba to go and fetch a crippled man called Mephibosheth. And they brought Mephibosheth and he would remain in the king's palace forever. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, the David that will send for you and honor you even at a global scale, I command them to show up now. I command them to show up now in the name of Jesus the Bible says now Jericho was shot nothing could come in and nothing could go out there are limitations like that they stand before you nothing goes in nothing goes out they just represent an inconvenience but the Bible says at the shout the seventh shout on the seventh day that the wall of Jericho fell flat and it sank in I speak to every wall that stands before you hear the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus I command it to sink and give you way to sink and give you the right way of passage in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah there's a very interesting man in the Bible I just spoke about him called Mephibosheth if you study Mephibosheth the problem he entered was not his making it was the mistake of a midwife midwives are those who help to transit seasons in your life as he was coming out of his mother's womb a nurse was careless and because of the carelessness of that nurse the man became crippled forever the midwives that help us through destiny can leave us as mighty men or can leave us as Mephibosheths are we together now i want to speak because it matters there are men who help you to cross that river to the next level and if they are careless and insensitive they may cripple dimensions of your life 
and incapacitate you. Even though Mephibosheth was favored, he never walked. I decree and declare, everyone sent by God as a midwife, as a destiny helper, may they play their role effectively. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me declare restoration. There are two things the Bible promises to restore. Number one is time. Number two, things. These are very important elements of destiny. When you lose time, you have lost everything. When you lose things, you need time to have them back. And God said he's powerful to restore both. Both the years that the canker worm has stolen and the things you have lost. I speak to someone. I don't know what you have lost. So some of you, maybe you got saved late. Maybe you got lazy towards spiritual things, but I declare supernatural restoration now. I speak prosperity to your life in the name of Jesus. By divine favor, may your hands be full. Enjoy the ministry of destiny helpers. And I pray for Olive Brook Church. I stand upon this exalted altar and I decree and declare step into a new season a new season of influence a new season of power a new season of wealth a new season of revelation in the name of Jesus begin to command results fearful results I speak to the two lift gates of this region I declare that you are open for the gospel you are open for advancement. You are open for development by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I command the controlling powers within this region. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I command that you bow to the Lordship of Christ. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Please allow me a minute or two. My apologies for time. Let me perform a very important function. The greatest assignment we are given as preachers and indeed believers is to help people know the Lord and to connect to the reality of his life. Please lend me your attention now. John 17 and verse 3. Jesus was praying and this is what he said. He said, and this is eternal life that they may know you, the one true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. In every gathering like this, thousands of people, I saw several people outside, many more within this auditorium, and several others who are watching now live and would be watching by way of rebroadcast. This is a huge opportunity to draw many to the cross. Can I tell you, coming to Jesus is more than just being a Christian. It's more than the religiosity of feeling spiritual. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever, that blessing is for whosoever, whosoever believes in him, he says, should not perish. You may have been around church, you may have been, a, uh, you know, around spiritual things for a long time. He's not calling you into religion. He's calling you into a practical, functional relationship. And I'm going to make two calls in one. Number one, you are saying, apostle, as I heard you teach, the Spirit of God began to nudge me that I need a relationship with this Jesus. More than a miracle from this Jesus, I need a relationship with him. Number two, you are saying, Apostle, my life, my Christian experience has gone haywire. I need to rededicate my life genuinely. Now, you see, the beautiful thing about spiritual things is that God respects your will, even at the expense of your eternal condemnation. John chapter 3 from verse 17 he says for God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved I'm going to make this call I believe there may be people in here and for those I'm going to ask you to come and stand here and all the overflows I'm going to request as the ushers guide them or the protocol to just move maybe to your screens in front and just stand there and we'll pray together and for those who are following by way of television or internet right in your home your office wherever you are watching from Jesus is willing and ready to give you a new life are we in agreement on that so I'm going to count one to five for sake of time you are in this auditorium don't wait for anybody to be the first don't say they know me no 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 that's that's not what we're discussing here this we're talking about a genuine relationship with Jesus I make my call now one to five let's celebrate them as they come one 
God bless you. Two. Thank you. Olive Brook, is this the best you can do? Celebrate them as they come. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Keep coming. Jesus is the way. One more time. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Ladies and gentlemen, I salute you for your courage. It always pays to say yes to Jesus. We've said yes to things of lesser value. The noblest decision that any man can make under heaven is to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. I salute you in front and all who are scattered across the overflow. May I please request, I'm standing here in front with Pastor, please lift your right hand as a sign of surrender high above your head and please say this after me let it be from the depth of your heart say lord jesus one more time say lord jesus i have heard your word i declare that i love you with all my heart i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I declare that eternal life is imparted into my spirit. From today and forever, I am a child of God. I declare that the grace of God is at work in my life. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for this once. The Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. They have come acknowledging your lordship over their lives. And I declare that the power to save is at work in them. In the name of Jesus. According to your declarations and integrity of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that from today you are bona fide recipients of the life of God. I bless you and I declare that the grace of God is truly at work in you. The power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is destroyed over your life. I declare that you love the things of God and you begin to grow in grace. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Right, so please let me make one final request for all of you who have come to the front. May I request that you follow the counselors. They will just have a quick word with you and then you'll be back to your seat. All the overflows, just follow the counselors as they direct you. Let's celebrate them. God bless you. 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 Pastor Jibril, thank you so very much. Olive Brook Church, may the Lord bless you.